Well, you see the new look. <laughs> you see that the baldness is back. So the bald milk dud has returned for the time being. So why don't we talk about college football now instead of talk about me? Because uh, we learned a lot in week number one. We learned a lot. And I mean, Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, Deion Sanders, prime time showed us in prime time, you know, Fox's version of prime time anyway. They, they proved the country wrong yet again. 20-point underdogs. They beat TCU in a wild game. Definitely the best game of the week by far. Um, man, and TCU just, you know, lost a lot of pieces last year. Really wasn't thinking too much of them coming into this year. And yet, that performance on defense was absolutely terrible. Terrible performance on defense. I mean, my goodness. 500-plus passing yards by Sanders. Travis Hunter was making play on both sides of the football. Talk about an arena football type of guy. It's Travis Hunter. Man can play. Unfortunately for teams like Baylor, Boston College, Purdue, Texas Tech, they lost games they should have in pretty funny ways. Baylor lost to Texas State. Yes, Texas State. That's like their biggest win ever. Boston College, you know, lost to Northern Illinois, Purdue, lost to Fresno State, Texas Tech lost to Wyoming in double overtime. Weird enough, you know, those were some interesting upsets, but there weren't any FCS versus FBS upsets this week. Crazy, you know, I thought FIU with their, you know, four passing yard performance in their first game, I thought they would be the ones to lose, but they did not lose against Maine. Uh, yeah, not a good look for those teams. Um, Army, um, because I know I, I was going to talk about them at some point. You know, we were we were going to dive in because again, this is one thing that carried over from last week. Again, Navy, you know, had to introduce new looks to their spread option attack. You know, by using the split back beer, using the power T, the wishbone again, I guess. It was more so the power T. I don't think people got that corrected. I think it was more so the power T. It looked like the wishbone to me, but it, it, I guess it's power T. Um, Army said, screw it. We're doing it from the shotgun. And it was a awful sight to see. Did this team even get 200 yards on the ground? In <laughs> Like and Army's still trying to go up the middle from the shotgun. That's not gonna work again. You know, unless unless you have that type of ability, you're not gonna you're not gonna go up the middle with you know a big old two hundred pound fullback or you know little hundred fifty pound slot backs. You're not gonna you're not gonna go up the middle like that. So you gotta spread the field. Army tried to spread the field a little bit. They just made too many mistakes against ULM, and I think this offense is absolutely horrid. Uh, I mean, we saw, you know, diamond formations. We saw a shotgun with, like, a tight end and a couple and a back in a wing type set, you know, wing tee from the shotgun, that Gus Malzahn type stuff. We saw all sorts of stuff from Army, and it just looked terrible to me. This is not, you're not 2014 Oregon. You're not Marcus Mariota led Oregon. Stop it. You're not Cam Newton led Auburn. You're not Dak Prescott with Mississippi State. You're not those teams. You're not. Try and do it from the eye or something like that. Try and bring back the eye bone or something like that. Just not this. This is disgusting. Uh, I, 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 the, the team I thought would be able to do this would be Navy because they saw I saw it. I saw them do it against Army in the Army-Navy game last year. I thought Navy would be the team that would be going from the shotgun like that, but instead Army was like, yeah, let me do it like this, and it just did not work out too well. I'm sorry. On the Big Ten, they debuted their new TV deals, Fox, NBC, CBS. Games, you know, weren't fun for the most part. I mean, come on, West Virginia, Penn State, Indiana, Ohio State. Yeah, that wasn't fun. Well, that's not fun. Um, Colin McCord, just a real disappointment. You know, you have all the receivers, Abuka, Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, 
you have the backs in the backfield. Uh, my Williams, Trevion Henderson. I mean, my goodness. Um, and, and that big tight end um, as well. Just disappointing. Winnowers, he was all right. But other guys, like Michael Penix, of course, you know he was going to light up. You know he was going to light up Boise State. Boise State is overrated. I not, again, I don't. I didn't get it. I didn't buy into the hype that Boise State was going to get this group of five bid this year. That that bid is coming from the Sun Belt, baby. You know, J.J. McCarthy surprised me. He he was out here lighting up, uh, you know, um, East Carolina. George Travis, of course, against LSU. And LSU's defense just got rocked by Keon Coleman, George Travis, and a bunch of two-back sets, a bunch of three tight end sets, you know, a bunch of, you know, one back with two tight ends. I mean, my goodness, it looked... It looked like the good old days under Bobby Bowden under here <laughs> with the way Florida State was just just doing no wrong. I mean, they were just out physically bullying the LSU Tigers on defense. And I mean, that second half was an absolute domination. 31-7 to seven as far as points scored. You know, 45-24 victory ain't too bad, baby. It ain't too bad. Um other guys, Caleb Williams, of course, continues to just be excellent. Nine touchdowns so far for him. Total, Jalen Milrow actually impressed with a crazy play that, you know, I, I, I didn't think he'd be able to get, but he got it. Drew Aller was throwing the ball over the place, which is very surprising. You know, you'd think you'd go to those backs in the backfield, but no, Aller said, I'm doing it. Dylan Gabriel, of course, just lighting up Arkansas State 73 to nothing. And Bo Nix. He's having fun out there. He could actually win the Heisman. I mean, then again, it, this is looking like a QB's award this year yet again. I mean, they, again, Oklahoma did not have to beat Arkansas State like that. 73 to nothing will demoralize anybody. As far as the Drake May versus Spencer Rattler show went, that game was uh, dominated by North Carolina's defense line. I mean, Spencer Rattler was just, he was sacked, what, nine times in that game? Terrible. Florida's bad. Nebraska's about as bad as Florida, but Florida's probably worse. Clemsoning, it's back. Just Cade Klubnik probably isn't the guy. Dabo Swinney, you know, he, he's he's just he's probably talking to God right now. They let Duke put up twenty eight on. They let Duke turn them over twice. I mean, two terrible possessions by Clemson inside the Duke 10 multiple times, multiple fumbles. One of them almost got taken back to the house. Duke made their fair share of mistakes in this game. It could have been worse. 28-7. to Yeah. Realistically, when you look at the top 25 and stuff like that, you, you, you really think, do you really think Clemson should be Anywhere near a top 25 slot right now. No, not really, but because Iowa continues to stink up the bed by not scoring points against Utah State like they should have. Yeah. Clemson stays in the top 25, but barely. Um, you see the slate? I mean, my goodness. Um, we got a good, good slate to start off today. You want to start your day off right with, with Notre Dame, NC State, Utah, Baylor. Baylor, you know, um, lost their quarterback. Utah technically doesn't have a quarterback right now. They're using two. Nebraska, Colorado, the Matt Rule led Nebraska versus prime time Deion Sanders in another big noon Saturday type game. And then you look at that through 30 window. Not a lot there, actually. Um, there is one game that I want to talk about a little bit more that's not among these, and this does indeed involve Iowa. But uh, again, the only other ranked versus ranked matchup in that window in, 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 in this Saturday slate is actually Ole Miss Tulane. Very key game for both teams early on. Um, you also have Texas a and Miami. And then in the late slot, Oregon, Texas Tech, of course, uh, Wisconsin, Washington State, Braylon Allen versus Cam Ward, and of course, 
Texas, Alabama. So what 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 kind of storylines do we got going into this week? We got a, we got a few. We got a, quite a few. Again, the hype train for Dion. Can that keep going against Nebraska? Will there be another one score game in this one? Iowa's offense, again, they're gonna need more against Iowa State. I don't know if, you know, you know, Baylor, you know, I mean, Baylor just looks terrible. The spread is like at minus nine in favor of Utah right now. That probably might rise a little bit more. Connor Wigman, uh, Connor Wigman, he should be interesting to watch against Tyler Van Dyke and the Miami Hurricanes. You know, a lot of people are hyping up Wigman, but we'll see. This is a test. This is a test against an experienced quarterback at Van Dyke. You know, who's been playing for a hot minute. And again, this underrated duel, Jackson Dart and Lane Kiffin going up against Michael Pratt and Willie Fritz, a, an underrated ranked battle. Definitely tune into that game. If you are not tuning into anything, tune into that game. The ACC has a new TV deal with CW, so we're gonna see what kind of what kind of goodies we're gonna get from Cincy and Pitt, former Big East rivals in this game on the CW this week, produced by Raycom Sports, of course. Again, those high-flying ducks who just scored 81. They're going up against the Texas Tech team that's reeling after the loss to Wyoming. wonder what the emotions are going to be like again. And again, Braylon Allen, Cam Ward, going to be beautiful to watch. That is going to be beautiful. You know, Tanner Mordecai, too, to see, you know, what kind of offense – we're really looking at here because again, Braylon Allen, you know, he was splitting carries uh, with another running back, and you know, and they were still able to easily get past Buffalo. Cam Ward, of course, you know, does his thing. You know, man can man can man can ball, and of course, Pac-12 after dark on Fox in prime time. Caleb Williams, USC's talented offense that has just guys all over the place. You can spread the field five wide, four wide, three wide, split back. I mean, my goodness, they can they could go. And with this Stanford offense looking actually kind of electric last week, with Ben Urasek at tight end, another tight end from Stanford that's just gonna probably you know do great things. I can, I can imagine. I mean, my goodness, Mandel was catching everything against Hawaii last week. So this. This is all compounded, you know, the game of the week is Texas, Alabama, of course, part number two in this duology before, you know, they really get going in the SEC every other year or whatever. So this is a game where these two quarterbacks, Quinn Ewers and Jalen Milrow, can they step up? Can they impress? The country is watching the defenses are going to be key in this game. Alabama's defense may have a little bit more. Texas defense has a lot more to prove. Going to be another close one, I feel like it. And again, like I've been saying all season long so far, is Alabama is going to have to rely on their running game. For Texas, again, defense, they got to stay on it. You know, Quinn Ewers, He's got to he's got to get the deep ball. Alabama's been dealing with some things on the defensive side of the ball, so you know, light them up, light them up, light up those DBs. This is going to be a fun, fun weekend. Under definitely an underrated weekend. After week one, kind of chalked on us for the most part. Again, no 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 upsets from the FCS. A couple of upsets that you know weren't. Very surprising again. I think I had Clemson projected in a New Year's Six Bowl. I am, I do not know what I was thinking there. You could probably put Notre Dame in that slot instead, um, where whatever I said for um, as far as you know, I think it's like the Orange Bowl. I think I had Clemson projected to be, yeah, you could put Notre Dame there, you know, at this point because my goodness, and yeah, we're off on the races to the college football playoff, the final. Four team edition. I know people are gonna argue with me again, and I've said my piece on why we should only have four playoff teams instead of like twelve. But you know, we're 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 done. 
up with that. We're 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 past that point. We're on. We're on forward to the end of the 2023 season. Week two will give us a hell of a time, and I'm ready for it. So, in any case, I will see you all tomorrow to talk the NFL finally for the first time this year. I know I was going to release a video at some point, you know, over the course of the past week, but I just haven't been feeling well. So, yeah. So I'm going to get on out y'all's hair, and I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. And we're going to talk the NFL, everybody. Take care. Good night. And sleep tight. College football is almost here yet again.